Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney and another daily dose of I told you so. We told you so. This is funny. We talk so much shit for this. So Bob Iger is coming back as the CEO of Disney mm -hmm. and we told people, hey, uh, don't get too excited. Everybody was getting excited. Like, hey, they're going to make changes at Disney. It's like, no, all of the stuff that Chapek got blamed for, most of it, Bob Iger started. We've been it. pointing that out since Chapek took over. Like, people were mad about this, that, or the other. And we kept saying, you know, hey, look, I, I agree with you. Chapek's a nightmare. But he's getting blamed for a lot of things that Iger had done. Iger put into play. We've been saying, taking a lot of crap, got a lot of hate mail for it, got called out for it repeatedly. We kept saying it. That's okay, because now Variety says it, so it must be true. Oh, not just Variety. Everybody is saying it. Here wow. we've got Fox. Bob Iger's Disney Challenge solved the problems he helped create. We've got, what's this one? Reuters. At Disney, Iger confronts succession problem he helped create. Oh, I'm so mad right now. I'm just like, screw you. Uh, yeah, so lots of- lots, Been saying it. Lots of people oh talking talking about this. Well, and yeah. It seriously pisses me off. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, just like, you know, hey, Star Wars is in decline. No, you're just a bunch of Nazis. And then the media says it. Hey guys, Star Wars is in decline. Whoa, my God, well, really? Well, you know what? I'm, really? I am the media. We I mean, we are the media. We're like the media that isn't full of shit. You know, we're the media. We actually have the credentials. We're the media. Been the media for a while. Been telling you this stuff. For a while, both on the on the show here and on the blog, been saying it and saying it and saying it. Took a lot of shit for saying it. Got called, told, oh, you're full of crap. You know, it's it's Chapek's fault. All this other stuff. And now they're all coming out and saying the same thing we've been saying. So now it's true because they said so. Yeah, exactly. That's that's how this works. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over two hundred eighty-one thousand subs. Ooh. Thank you for the support. Geeky's the man now. Uh, Ugh, Geeky's the man. Just, I'm mad. Uh, go to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney news. And uh, get, guess what? We're going to grow the little media empire. We're going to we're gonna bring back the podcast, too. So you got the websites and the YouTubes and the podcasts. And guess what? Our websites are actually uh, picked up by some news organizations now. So, yeah, I guess we are the media. We are. Because, I mean, you come. You we actually are. were an editor for I was a newspaper editor for or, years. Uh, more yep. than one. Yep. And it's like we we are in Google News. We are actually considered a news source. I can't spell for shit, but yeah, I I was <laughs> I was an editor. I was. Uh, believe it or not. Variety. Iger's big Disney reorganization aims to fix the problems he helped so. No shit. Oh my God. And they're talking about the memo, which we talked about. And there actually is a clip of that uh, memo floating around on Twitter. Now, I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but uh, he, he was kind of the guy that was blowing the whistle on the Disney diversity and inclusion initiatives and and uh, Rufo, Rufo, Christopher Rufo. And he had the, and he basically was like, yeah, we're going to, you know, uh, you know, not everything's political and we're going to try to fix that. No, uh, he's like um, political. It's like, well, some things I wouldn't determine as political. And I'm like, like what? Yeah. You know what I mean, it's so. So they're restructuring things again. They got rid of Kareem Daniel. But they restructured before. Yep. Um. They said now as the street shifts away from the all-in-one streaming mentality that dominated Chapex run. And that Which was started was by Iger. Yep. Iger seems poised to give responsibility back to Disney's separate content units, which could help convince investors that the Mouse House plans to keep its approach diversified. The reinstated CEO plans to implement a new structure that puts more decision-making back in the hands of our creative teams and rationalizes costs, which they did before. This is a time of enormous change and challenge in our industry, and our work will also focus on creating a more efficient and cost-effective structure. Um, but here's the thing. It's not really helping the stock any. People are actually uh, a little concerned because they do realize, investors realize, like all this shit, all this going all in on streaming, all of the uh, the price hikes and all this other stuff that has negatively impacted Disney. Yeah, Chapek was just executing plans that were put in place yeah. by Bob Iger. Like this, but at the same time, the turbulence of JPEX tenure and the problems caused by his restructuring have helped cloud the fact that the problems began with Iger. Yes. Uh, in hindsight, aspects of JPEX strategy were certainly misguided. It's worth remembering that JPEX was trying to repair dysfunction caused by another reorganization implemented by Iger before the launch of Disney+. Plus. Right, they reorganized the streaming, the direct-to-consumer. That was his thing. He, I know. He wanted, he wanted to turn Disney into a Netflix competitor, and he basically, they bet the farm on Disney+. Plus. And we should have realized that something wasn't right when Kevin Mayer, the guy that was in charge of that, 
uh, jumped ship right mm-hmm. after it launched. You know, but that was. Well, wait, some people did realize that wasn't right and covered that Kevin Mayer jumped ship. I wonder who that was. What? Could it be Geeky the Man, the media herself? Yeah. Media. Yeah, that's right. Balls that's right. just dropped. Yeah, see, now you can listen to Much her. Much like their stocks. <laughs> Geeky's balls drop like Disney's stock. There you go. They're big and bouncy. We stop talking about my balls. Anyway. Anyway, um, late in his tenure in 2018, the once and future CEO introduced new corporate structure that created Disney's first direct right. consumer Direct-to-consumer. division. Yep. And they talk about Kevin Mayer. That's when Kevin Mayer, let them, they kind of left. Yeah, after, not long after that. And they talk about Peter Rice that got ousted too. Um, <sighs> Chapek's subsequent restructuring was partly intended to correct the problems of uh, greenlighting too much shit, I guess, having uh, too many people reporting uh, it was to the streamline it so there weren't yeah. so many people you had to go through. It basically, what they tried to do was turn Disney into a Netflix that also had theme parks and boats. Right, but then the, the problem <laughs> is, but yeah, but the thing is, the problem it is, is, is that it has theme parks and boats. But it can't be all dependent and all the eggs can't be in the streaming basket, right. which is what Iger's trying to undo now. But Iger's the one who initiated that. Now, to be fair. Had they not had Disney Plus when the pandemic hit, Disney would have been completely kerfuggered. There was no question about that because they would have, the, the cruise ships were down, the parks were down, other than shopping and licensing deals, they really didn't have anything. So they that, that kind of saved their asses. But they mentioned that about, you know, Chapek you know, drove up the, the, the predictions on the numbers. Yes and no. A lot of these like being profitable in 2024, that, that was, was Iger. Because we were, we were at... Uh, celebration, Star Wars Celebration 2019 with Disney, Mm -hmm. with Disney. We were there with Disney in 2019 and uh, they were talking about, you know, how long it was going to take for Disney plus to be profitable and all of this stuff. And they're like, yeah, it's not going to be profitable until 2024. And they were doing the the signups and the pre-sales and all that stuff there. And people were excited, but of course you've got, you know, people spending money to go to a star Wars convention. And a lot of them, Disney star Wars fans are going to spend the money on the streaming. And they were, they were, you know, ecstatic. They're like, Oh yeah, we're going to be profitable. And, but they they didn't know the pandemic was going to happen. No, no one knew that was going to happen except for maybe China. Um, (laughs) Anyway, China knew the CCP knew all that. So, um, you know, they're they, they, a lot of the stuff that, that JPEG now, JPEG did a lot of shit on his own. That, like, I mean, the whole Florida thing, I mean, dude stepped in it big time. He, he made a lot of mistakes, don't get me wrong. JPEG was a nightmare, but not everything JPEG did was his own decision. Like, Genie Plus, that was all under Iger, it was announced yeah. it was coming, it got delayed because of the pandemic, yes. but that yes. was all announced under Iger. I'm Pretty sure the Lake Nona, um, all that, that was under Iger. Iger. What's really interesting, though, um, they said they were very close. It's interesting. It said it's okay. So they didn't bring this up in the other one. Vox brings this up because they want to throw shade at their competitors. They talk about the amount of debt that Disney went in to, you know, uh, Try to compete and buy everything. They bought like, Fox. They bought Fox. They overpaid for Fox. Seventy billion dollars. They were significantly gonna, overpaid. They came close to buying Vice and Twitter. Well, I remember. Oh yes, I remember. Um, wasn't that the one they had invested in? And then it was turned out that, that it was war- they said that they, they wrote it off. And it was Vice. It but, was Vice. They they lost four hundred four hundred million dollars. They given us four hundred million dollars. We would at least brought you something back for it. Well, how much are they going to lose just off of Strange World? I mean, that's one movie. They've lost so much money. And then how much have they actually lost? on these uh, streaming shows because they've, they've, you know, juggled the numbers to make it look like they weren't spending as much on these shows as they actually were. But the reality is, is that the Marvel and the Star Wars shows are expensive, you know, and they're way drawn out. They're taking what should have been a movie and stretching it out into like eight or 10 episodes and spending a shit ton of money on that stuff. Yeah, we're not going to cover it in this in a video, but that it's interesting because people are pointing out, like you know, when it comes to Z Plus, they did the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, and then we did um, Werewolf by Night, and both of them are forty five minute specials. You you got the whole Marvel hit without having, like you said, stretched out a bunch of fluff over a course of a whole bunch of episodes, a lot more expense, unnecessary shit. Yeah. You still got the idea across. They were fun. They were they were a chunk people could mostly do. Like a lot of people can't do like 10 different shows at eight to 12 episodes each, but they could do a 45 minute special. And then yeah. maybe they'll be more willing to go to a movie because they aren't so overwhelmed with everything on Disney Plus. Yeah, so 
you know, th- they're mentioning that. I, I'll give Vox credit for that, saying that, hey, they way overextended they themselves. They did. And the thing is, they got called out by Elizabeth Warren and stuff, too, about the yeah. fact that they, when it came down to pandemic, they threw everybody overboard because they didn't have the money. Iger was still there. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't the CEO, but he was still there. No, I guess Iger made sure people didn't get screwed like Chabak yeah. wanted to do. But they would have had more money to weather the storm if he hadn't overspent on Fox. Overspent on Fox. Then they took a bunch, like over, it was like $125 billion or something. They, they took that as loans. Now, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, my personal feeling is Disney is in worse, much worse financial shape than they're letting on. Because, yeah, well, I think they got rid of Chapek like they did. Because we're finding out now that Chapek was cooking the books on the the, the amount of money Allegedly, they were spending. Supposedly. I, the that's, fact a co- that, that's, a, that's called covering your ass. I, I, the fact that they, they tossed him out on a Sunday night, the way they did, tells me that shit got real and they were look i think christy mccarthy staged a coup and she probably took the actual books and said no here here guys here's where we're actually at and they took a look at and they're like oh shit no i'm just laughing because i'm thinking when they do like hey hey chayback do you believe do you 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 a godly man do you believe in jesus uh I don't know. Well, you better start believing now. You might want to go to church because you're fired. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I mean, it's it's they took him to church. Yeah, they took him to the woodshed. On but, Sunday. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I think things are way worse now. What they're not mentioning, and that's what you know, Chape or uh, Iger's trying to dance around the whole political issue. Now he is the one. Iger is the one that put Disney on the political path. This it whole was him. Yes, diversity and inclusion initiatives, all that shit, that was on Bob Iger's watch. So mm-hmm. all of this stuff that Disney has gotten backlash for, that he's supposedly going to fix, they're not going to bring that up on Box. But that was all Bob. It was Iger. all they started under Iger. I mean, the key that they established was after him, but a lot of it was started. Under it was him. put in place under Iger because he wanted. You know? He had political aspirations, yes. and he wanted to go. You know, be a. You know, go for presidency or be some kind of. You know, ambassador to China or UK. So did he only come back because he's like, well, there's no chance in hell I'm going to be president, and there's no chance in hell I'm going to be an ambassador to China. So well, I remember uh, at the beginning of the when, when when we had the election last time, the, mm-hmm. the big one, and he was there because he was still ceo and he was kind of like well you know what um we're not going disney's not going to give republicans any more money unless they concede the election all this other stuff yeah. and i thought that was really weird i'm like okay you know whether or not republicans won legit that's not that's up for debate whether they won or lost whatever that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about was he was threatening to take funding away from republicans if they didn't just agree to let you know to go along with it because that's what he wanted yeah and again that we brought up then Disney gives the both sides. We've been telling you this. And then everybody's like so shocked earlier this year. It's like, we told you repeatedly. Yes. They give the both sides. We've known this for years. I mean, look, most of their money from tourism, most of their money from vacations comes from Walt Disney World, which is in deep in the heart of Republican Florida. Of course, they try to make Republicans as happy as they can make them. And they were, golly gee willikers, so blindsided, uh, you know, over the, the don't say gay controversy. I'm like... What did you expect? Now, here's the thing. I don't think that would have happened with Iger. I think Iger would have kind of weaseled his way around and tap danced around the issue and gotten what he wanted. But Chapek just kind of went in he clumsily. Doesn't the, he doesn't have the finesse. He doesn't have the finesse. But in some ways, it's actually a, a, a refreshing change because at least, like, you're kind of being told up front. <laughs> it's like... It's like we always kind of knew that Disney had disdain for their customers and disdain for people of a certain political persuasion. But thanks to Bob Chapek, it all came out in the we open. We all know that that's now we all know it's undesirable. Against. Now we all know you're undesirable and fat. <laughs> you know, and and uh, a bigot too. So you're undesirable, right. fat bigots. Thanks to Bob Chapek, we know what Disney really thinks about you. So yeah. good luck undoing that damage. Bob Iger. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.